Hi there, Brother Sewing family. It is Monday, checking off the list, Groundhog Day, all over again. <laughs> and the Brother Brand Ambassadors are taking over the Brother Sews Facebook page, and today we are also live streaming on YouTube. So we are taking over both pages. You can leave comments on either side. We can see them all. In fact, I already see a handful of you have already rolled in. So if you've never been to one of our sewing shows, say hi, say where you're from, I wonder what we're sewing today, Sandy wants to know. Well, today's a really fun day. Emily Thompson is waiting to pop in. She's gonna be sewing a fabric basket. It's super cute. In fact, it would have really been super cute yesterday too. But this week, let me get my chair. Ugh. I tried to find a clean spot in the studio. These days, that's all we're doing is sewing. And I like to sew and throw, so it gets a little messy. So let me give you a quick lineup of the schedule for the week, and then we're gonna bring Emily up. So, um, We've got a lot of people here on YouTube. Awesome. So say where you're from. You don't know your neighbor might be sewing next to you uh, and probably not fishing at this point, but we won't go there. <laughs> I hope you all stayed healthy over the weekend. Uh, for those of you that celebrate Easter, I hope you had a good time. I know I have a lot of friends that did little Zoom meetups. I'm doing that today with my mom and sisters. Yeah, just something different. Gotta have fun, right? So here's the lineup. Today is Emily. She's going to be showing uh, a fabric basket. Super cute. Tomorrow, Cindy Hogan will be joining us. So by the way, last week, so many of you were looking for Cindy Hogan's video, and we accidentally forgot to share it to our page. So we're so sorry. You could have gone back to Cindy's, and you can still go back to Cindy's page to watch that, but tomorrow she will be live here on um Brother Sews, so you won't miss it. And that will be on Brother Sews Facebook. And then Wednesday, Emily Thompson will be here again, I believe at, nope, <laughs> maybe. She'll be shared, I'll bring her up here, we'll talk about it. And Thursday, Laura Pfeiffer will be on at four o'clock. She's gonna be showing her way of sewing a mask and putting a filter in it. So uh, just a few little different things for you. And then on Friday, those of you that have a serger, Mark your calendar for noon Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to show you how to thread it, dust that serger off, <laughs> literally. We're gonna serge it and I'm gonna tell you what all the buttons are for, all right? So I'm gonna bring Emily on up here. So pop in, say hi. Let's see, uh, there you go. Hey, Emily. Hey, hey. sorry about, about that Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> you are, you are, you're gonna have a live show on your page, correct? Yeah. And then we. Yes, so you can go to Emily's page and watch that, or you can come to uh, Brother Sews and watch it, and that's where everybody's been kind of getting together. And that's at uh, three, is it at 3.30? Three o'clock. Three o'clock Eastern time. And then my show is at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. So we've got a whole week packed for you. And then Saturday, of course, is It's So Easy Sewing Marathon, which has been a lot of fun, and that starts at noon. So uh, if you... You might want to get the brother newsletter if you're missing some of these, but each week we're doing this. So, Emily, how was your weekend? It was good. It, was good. it feels like Christmas here. We have six inches of snow, and yesterday we all put our jackets on and went for a walk. Oh, geez. <laughs> it was a very relaxing weekend. And um, our church actually did a drive in service where we all go to the parking lot and then watch the pastor up on like a big of Thing. Mm -hmm. thing. So it That's was really cool. Yeah, we tuned our radio, radio and everyone stayed in their car. car. So it was a really <laughs> fun Easter <laughs> and um, yeah, 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 relaxing and ready to get back at it. It's so different. All right, so I'm going to try to fix the sound. For some reason, there's an echo now, so I'm just going to um, take you out for a second. I'll bring you right back Thank up, you. okay? Let me just give me one second, guys. I just want to make sure that there's no echo. So hold on just a minute. Let's see if this does the test. All right, Emily, do we have an echo now? Test, test. I don't hear an echo. Do you guys? That sounds, feel better. This? That sounds better. That sounds much better. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> and I'm looking just to make sure because there's a five second delay. And Great. so. I think it, it sounds better. I could hear it before and it sounds better on my end. So I'm thinking it's probably better. All right, I think we're good. Yeah, okay. Sorry. All right, Emily, what do you got? What are you gonna sew for us today? Okay. I thought it's super, super cute. Yes, so you had shared the photo on kind of the teaser, and I actually don't know where that fabric basket is at the moment. So <laughs> I can't show you the finished product um, 
right yes, now. You know what? I'll bring up, let me bring up the photo for everybody. Yeah. So but I have another what? one cut out. Well, almost cut out. I was just going to finish cutting it out with you guys just to kind of show you um, the template and what it looks like. Um, but there's a free template that you can download on my site that will help you to cut out this basket in exactly to the size and the dimensions and everything that I have set. And then um, the great thing about this is it stores flat. So you can't really see in the pictures, but the ends snap together. Um, and so you can fold it up and snap it and then you can unfold it and store it flat. So if you're putting it with some seasonal decorations or other things like that that you wanna put away, you can totally just store it flat and put it away and it won't get um, smashed. So, um, or you could send it in the mail. You know, there's just lots of fun things that you could do with the fact that it kind of opens and then comes back together. So that's what we're gonna be making today. And I'm excited to get started. A lot of options before I see a lot of uh, questions, which will take time for your questions, but I'm just gonna bring up your, here's um, her website. If you're yep. trying to go there later, don't forget Life So Savory. Yep, if you search fabric basket on Life So Savory, it will come right up. Um, and then we can, we'll add the link later when we're all finished. So yeah. That's great. All right, Emily, take it away. Okay, so I'm actually gonna switch to an overhead camera so you guys can see a little bit better hopefully what's going on. So I think Angela will switch that. There you go. If that doesn't work, we will just go back to the um, the other, the computer camera. But okay, so I have cut out one side of the fabric basket and I'm using this pretty spring floral to inspire me amidst the snow that I'm dealing with today. And then I have the other one here on my cutting mat and I was just going to show you, so it's cut on a fold and I did that so I could keep the template to one printable page. So really simple and easy. And then I'm just going to cut out a second one. So we need to cut two pieces of fabric from the template to create the basket. And if you want to do two different fabrics, like the one in the picture, you could totally do that. I'm gonna do two of the same today, um, but it's up to you. So I've been trying to use my rotary cutter more, but I still can't figure out how to do some of those little pieces. So <laughs> that's my goal has been to use my rotary cutter more. Okay, so then the thing is, the second part of this um, is we're going to put some fusible foam to give the basket some structure. So you can use fusible foam or thick interfacing, just something that is gonna give it that sort of basket shape, and it's up to you what you wanna use, okay? So I in the tutorial that if you look over on my site and see that, I use like a fusible fleece, and today I'm gonna try foam. But what we need is to create a seam allowance that we can sew that does not have the foam in it, so after you've cut your fabric, you're gonna to wanna to take the template and trim a narrow seam allowance. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do now. And that's why I wanted to cut out this part live while I was showing you so that you could kind of see how I got the second um, size. So it's the same template, I'm just cutting it down and I'm taking, I don't know, approximately a fourth inch off. If we need to trim more from the fleece, I will do that. But I'm gonna start with this, okay? So then, I don't know if I can cut this on a fold or not, it's pretty thick. See if I can stick a few pins in here and cut it. Celeste said she didn't know fusible foam existed. How cool is that? Oh, and you know what my absolute favorite is, is double-sided fusible foam because then you really can fuse it to both sides of the fabric. This is just single-sided, because the last time I ordered from Amazon, that was really all I could find. So, um, but it is really fun for bag making and even zipper pouches or anything you wanna give a little structure to. It's really great. All right, sorry, I have, those are my paper scissors. Gotta switch back and forth. Okay, so we cut out the foam with the same template. And 
And what we're trying to do is leave a edge on the fabric that we can sew the fabric together, the two sides, and that this really, because this foam is pretty thick. We don't want that to be getting in our way, but it's also going to give a really nice little structure to our basket. And I might have to trim more on a couple spots, but we're going to start with that. Okay, so let's flip this over and see how this lines up. Because before we sew it, we are gonna fuse it. That is thicker. You don't realize how thick it is until you lay it on that fabric and it really yeah. is thick. Yeah, so you can see in comparison to the fabric how it's quite thick. And for the most part, I think I'm going to be able to sew. I might trim a little bit more off this side and then a little bit more down here. So I just want to give myself, a, it doesn't have to be a very wide seam allowance, but I do want to give myself room to sew and not be fighting this foam the whole time. I will say if you're not familiar with this or you haven't really used fusible foam, a, a thinner fusible fleece or just a really thick fusible interfacing may be easier because with the thickness of this, <clears throat> sometimes I do end up battling it, <laughs> trying to keep my presser foot in place. <laughs> okay, so there we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to use this little, this is a little tabletop ironing pad that I made and use that to fuse my foam in place. And if you guys want information, I can see some questions rolling in about your cutting mat and things like that. You can go to her blog and find information on that. So I'll put her blog back up for you. So there you go. Go to lifesosavory.com and you can look up. That. Or message me or email me if you have specific questions too about sometimes if you can't find the things. So I'm using um, steam to fuse the fleece or the, the foam. And this um, little pad has heat resistant interfacing in it so that I can iron right on top of my other projects or cutting mat. It's handy sometimes when I just want to do it all together. <laughs> so Emily, we're having a lot of fun while you're pressing because <laughs> I'm watching all the comments on Facebook and YouTube and we're doing I spy on your table. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We are loving that fabric that is on the top corner. It's like a it's a spiral or something right in front of you. Is that fabric or is it a book? This yeah. is my like, notebook planner, my life oh. organizer. Love it, love it, love the colors. Yes. I always have a paper planner in addition to my computer. And this year I went with a really fun design to try and, you know, keep things exciting. Okay, so I think that looks like it is on there. I think you can see just the seam allowance around there a little bit and really how thick that foam is on there. That's really thick. Okay, so it's gonna give, you know, you can kind of envision the basket, but it's really gonna give it a nice um, structure on there. Okay, so then we'll move all this stuff out of the way. I'm gonna just try to sew right up here today to avoid some of the issues we had last week. Um, so what I want to do is put the fabric right sides together. And I'm going to put just a couple of clips to keep everything in place. And we're just going to stitch around with a straight stitch. While you're pinning, I'm just going to, hey, Stephanie, and yeah. a couple of you came in late. And don't worry, you can, if you want to watch the replay as soon as we're not live, which we're live right now, 
so you can ask questions. And then as soon as we're not live any longer, you can go back and watch the replay. She's making a fabric bag. And if you want to make sure you can find the video again, all you have to do is click share and set, share it to your timeline. Or you can go back to Brother So's YouTube or Facebook page and click on videos. So that's uh, if that helps you. I saw a lot of people saying, what are you making? <laughs> So it looks, it's a strange shape. It's a strange shape right now. Um, but it is going to be a fabric basket. And you can see that this is, when it's not snapped up, this is how it stores flat. So if you are looking to unsnap it and store it flat, this is kind of the shape that you would be um, storing. Okay, so we're going to leave a opening on one of these sides to um, turn. We have to turn this right side out. So I, I will begin stitching kind of down here and then go all the way around. You guys can continue your I spy game while I'm <laughs> making my way all the way around. And I'll probably stop right about at this orange clip um, when we get back around. Hey, Emily, or, is there is there anything pressed to the other piece of fabric or is the other fabric just well, by itself? The other fabric's by itself. So if I had double sides usable foam, after I turn it right side out, I would press it again to fuse the other side, um, but I don't. So the other side will be not actually fused to the interfacing. It'll just be loose, but it's pretty tight because it's kind of stretched, you know, yeah. along there. Yeah. This all is right. her blog. I'm going to put it back up here. And don't worry. She has all the patterns on there. You can go there to find that. I know everyone always says, where can we find you guys? So I put mine at the bottom. I have Emily's up there. And now we're going to watch you sew. And I would be afraid of breaking a needle sewing through all that. But you're just sewing like a breeze. Right. So the, we're not sewing through the foam. So we're. I'm going on the outside of the foam. And I'm just, so that's why I trimmed the foam to try and keep it, um, I'm sewing right next to it. And that's why I say sometimes you're kind of, fighting with your presser foot because your presser foot doesn't want to be half on the foam and half off the foam. So it tends to drift over. So that's, you know, just, I just have to kind of fight with that a little bit, but I'm over. Oh, so it's thin. Sorry and about that. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. I saw that your phone was uh, kind of freezing. So I was bringing you up. So sorry oh. about that. Do you want me to switch the other one? No, you're good. You're okay. fine now. And I am pivoting on lifting my needle and pivoting on all these corners, which is several along the way. But otherwise, I'm simply stitching around all the sides. Hey, Emily, what size needle are you using again on that? Like you said, you're just sewing through the fabric, not the, I'm just clarifying for a couple people yeah, on here. I think it's just an 11 or a 70, whatever you, yeah, so just a regular sort of universal needle, nothing special. Okay, I made it through one end of the, all the angles, and now we'll get to just go straight down the side. <laughs> oh, um, Emily, I've got a good one for you. Okay. Tim Timothy wants to know where are the little three background noises hiding, LOL. <laughs> yeah. They are having their screen time upstairs in the bedroom. <laughs> putting them on their devices pretty much guarantees I can have some quiet, uninterrupted time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a few interruptions last week for sure. They're so cute, though. Um, people are asking if um, it matters if they used a zipper foot or regular foot. I mean, it, if you use a zipper foot, you could definitely get closer to the foam, but it just... Yeah. I think it's whatever you're comfortable with. I do kind of like the wider base on here. I feel like that's helpful for me, but ultimately, whatever you feel like is what helps you to sew the best, it would not matter. Yeah. It's not going to affect the outcome of this at all if you change up the foot. Hey, Janet, I see your comments on here, and I will uh, give you some tips at the end of the show when Emily's finished of how to find these Facebook Live shows every day, which will help you, and how where you can find the replays as well. 
Yeah, I also should have them posted in my group and page today. Last week I forgot to share it, but I did today. So that should help people find it. Okay, we're almost there. You guys are hanging on. Oh, and of course my bobbin thread is not going to finish. <laughs> that only happens to me, I thought. <laughs> that happens oh, good to me too. Okay, so let's just <clears throat> cut the thread here. Change this out. Apparently I'm not good at checking that before I start this project. Hey, that's all right. Can I bring up your other camera because people can watch you? Did you are you winding another bobbin or did you just pop no, one in? I had another one. Oh, yeah. she's all prepared. I just grabbed it. I'm. This it's going to be on the inside, so I didn't really. Although it doesn't look like it. It's not playing nice, so we're going to have to start over. So yeah, if you want to switch to the other camera and see me clean out this mess now in the bobbin. <laughs> So I'm, I'm uh, going to answer a couple questions while you're doing that. Yeah. So while you're getting all your stuff in order, I'm going to leave your, I'm going to take your phone off for a second. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone said Murphy's Law. So a couple of things while she's uh, getting her bobbin working. Um, the Facebook Live Show. So what we're doing to try to make it easier for everyone, first of all, we're live streaming on YouTube and Facebook now. So if you go to the Brother So's YouTube channel or their Facebook page, now there's a couple of things you need to do. I'm going to start posting our live videos at least one hour early. So if you have a time schedule of what show you want to watch, just pop over to Brother So's Facebook page an hour early. You'll see a photo of what we're working on, and you can say uh, interested, and then it will pop up on your screen right when we go live. The same thing happens on YouTube. So either way, then you have access right away to that video. I know it's Facebook is Facebook, but there's something that you can click on and... I'm going to just bring that up. So when you're on Facebook and you can't do it now while we're live, but I'll try to post a photo of this uh, tomorrow for you. When you look at the Brother Sews page, there's a little area at the top where you can click on an, air, um, an arrow. And underneath that, it might say, how do you see Brother Sews information? It might be set to default. And if you click instead, see first, then every time we go live, it'll pop up on your page immediately. So just a little tip for you. Um, not that that works always, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what are you, let's, I'll let you sew now. Is it working? Okay. Yep, so we, I just finished the last little bit. I got my bobbin to play nice. Good. Um, so now I will be turning it right side out, okay? So we'll take this, and actually before I turn it, what we wanna do is a, just like other projects, Clip those corners so that we can try to get them nice and sharp when we've turned it. And this hey, one Matthew. I'm so glad you popped in here. Well, one of these we got Matthew will be on this show too. Fun crafting. Fun. Okay, so just, yep, going around, clipping the corners. The side that I didn't see while I was sewing, it doesn't, it never hurts to take a quick look and make sure that you've caught all those edges. Sometimes they get past me and, you know, the fabric slipped out of the way and I only ended up catching one layer, which means then we'll have a hole. So better to check that now. And then in these little notches here, I'm just going to clip the corners in and not really trim it. So we've trimmed, clipped, and then we'll begin the fight with my foam to flip this. Okay, so now I have my opening. Again, this is pretty thick, so it's going to take me, is it better if I do it over here? Let me bring, oops, I'm trying to bring up, sorry, the phone keeps freezing, so okay. I'm just- so Why don't I just do this one? I'll move the machine. Okay. We'll just do a little flip -a Okay, there we go. <laughs> This is what we call make it work. <laughs> okay, so I thought the overhead view would be nice, but I know my phone doesn't always play nice. Um, <laughs> here we have the fabric is right sides together. The foam is on this side. This fabric has nothing on it. And now we're gonna flip it. 
So it's just a matter of, you know, playing. <laughs> this is what you would not do if you just painted your fingernails. You would no. not be. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ruin a good manicure here. I know. So while you're doing that, I see a few people in here have ordered Brother Machines. Somebody just said that their dream machine is arriving, so they must be. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you guys know this, but a lot of the Brother dealers, since we are all quarantined of some sort of staying home, you can pick up, drive by, they take it out to your car, you're good to go. So keep yep. that in mind. Yeah. That's a great service. I've also noticed that like online, the brother machines are almost all sold out right now. Everyone is buying like on Amazon, you cannot find anything right now. Nothing. You know, that's so interesting you said that. I have a friend that I just loaned one of my uh, Project Runway machines to because she was trying, she wanted to make some more masks Yeah, and her machine died and she couldn't buy anything anywhere. So definitely check with your brother dealers though, because yeah. they do have machines. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. I just had someone asking me, what's a good, you know, like start a machine. I don't want to spend a lot. And I was like looking and I'm like, there's nothing, nothing at yeah. all. So I said, yeah, go to your dealer and see what they have there. If you're in a rush, you know, like this, that's probably your best option. Okay. So I'm using my scissors. I'll bring you up. Here you go. Reach inside and best I can, you know, push these corners out. You can see that they're they push out pretty well. That foam goes in there and really, you know, makes it a pretty good corner. So you can use your, you know, your needle, your um, scissors if you're not, if you think you won't poke through or a knitting needle works great here as well. Okay. There's the website. I see some more people popping in. What's her website? What's her website? There you go. Okay. I put my look at how, really yep. Look at how cute it looks. It's oh. nice. This is the side that I fuse to. So there's like not a wrinkle on there. It really, and I'll make this the outside of my basket when, cause you can choose when we get to that point. Um, but actually this side looks great too. And if you did have double sided fusible, which I would, if you're buying for this, that's what I would recommend because then I could put my iron on here and fuse the side that wasn't after I flipped it. Um, and then we're just gonna close the opening. So just fold our seam allowance in. And you can either, if you don't wanna top stitch all the way around your basket, which that is a little bit tricky because then you are sewing through the foam. And I won't today just because it's not very exciting to just watch me stitch again all the way around. But I am going to machine close this and you could then top stitch all the way around. So I'll have a little line of stitch here and I may go back and finish that stitching later. But I'll do that um, when we're finished. So let me grab the machine back and um, we will stitch. I think you guys can see. Yeah, oh, we can see there. Yeah, that looks great. Okay, so we will, I'm just gonna stitch really close to the edge of the fabric to close the opening that I use to turn it. And this is a little bit thicker because again, now I am really sewing through the foam. I've already used up the foam seam allowance, but it's soft. If you haven't used it before, fusible foam is really soft and pliable for the most part. So. It doesn't give me too much hassle when I'm stitching on it. Okay, so here, there's where I just stitched through and you can see a little bit. Here is a lighter thread, so we don't see it as much. And that will be on the outside of the basket, which is good. Okay, so then the last part is to put in our snaps, which when I was stitching around, they all went flying. I guess I caught the pile of snaps <laughs> with my fabric. Hey, uh, Sandy just popped in and she wants to know what's the model of the machine you're using. I should know these by heart by now, but I don't. It's the LB5000 is the one I was just <laughs> using, the combo sewing and embroidery machine, but we just used it for sewing today. 
Yeah, so for those of you that don't know that, it has, doesn't that one have uh, marble, marble yeah, design? Yeah, marble, yep, and a four by four hoop for really fun projects. Yeah, and built in marble designs. So very fun. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so now I have my pile of plastic snaps and you can use a plastic or metal or and whatever you have and then or want to use. And then we also, um, you can adjust a little bit the height of your basket. Like if you want it to be really shallow, you could actually use two um, snaps and put them here. I'm gonna put one snap here and you actually, I'm not actually gonna attach it at all to this middle piece. That's kind of just the structure um, and keep the basket. So then you can see, yes. Yeah, so someone mentioned quilting, which would be great. So you could also quilt this. You could stitch on the fold lines here to make them sharper when you fold it up if you wanted that to be, it looks kind of like a boat the way I do it because they are sort of gradual up. But if you did like a top stitch here, it might, you know, crease the foam and make that a little bit of a squarer. You can kind of crease it a little bit too to get it to go there. So, so the snap placement is kind of up to you you can kind of see where it looks like it's going to be and how steep you want the sides of your basket. Um, and then I'm using the awl to poke through all the layers. Oh, yeah. Okay, don't poke yourself. <laughs> and then we'll put one side of the snap on either one of those sides. And again, I'm not putting anything on the middle but you definitely um, could if you wanted it to be not as steep on the sides. So, uh, hey, Sharon, that's not a dumb question. She wants to know what a built-in marble design is. So, <laughs> an embroidery design. And you know, that's a great question because if you didn't know that we were talking about embroidery, which I didn't say that, <laughs> you're probably like, what? what on earth is that in the machine, right? <laughs> Marvelous designs, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> comics, which we're actually during this quarantine, working our way through the Marvel movies as a family, showing the boys for the first time. Okay, so there's one end. You can see this snap in the middle. And again, you can adjust how much you overlap, which affects how steep the sides of your basket come up. So if you want it you know, less steep, then you would just overlap. You wouldn't overlap them. And then I'm overlapping, I don't know, inch and a half or so to create a steeper side on there. And I'm just going to estimate that they're the same amount of overlap and then punch through the middle again. So well, your fabric is what makes this so cute. You know, it's a very yeah. simple pattern. Yeah, but you know what? This is such a cute idea. First of all, this week the theme is getting organized, which <laughs> I need a <laughs> but I can think of little of those little bins for um, different buttons around my sewing table when I always have just a, I sometimes I'll have a couple feet and things like that that I don't want to put away and that's a great way to do that. We've had this the other one, the pink ones in the picture. After we made it, I had it on our table for a long time. We had like paper napkins in it, and that was a really cute. So I probably will use that one for this because I don't know what happened to that other one. So. I probably was organizing at some point and was like, I don't need this anymore. Got yeah. Rid of it. <laughs> Very okay. cute. So there you go with your little fabric basket and you can see the inside and the outside. I left the outside, that, the side that was fused to the foam so it doesn't really have any wrinkles. The inside has a little bit of fabric gaping, but again, like someone had suggested, you could quilt that, um, or you could even just sew two straight seams along where sort of the fold of the basket comes. But easy sewing. Very easy. So, uh, Emily, could you use Velcro instead? Have you tried that? I think you totally could use Velcro. I mean, hook and loop tape. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Use whatever, whatever you have on hand for a closure. You could even use a button and sew a buttonhole in one side and um, put the button on the other. You know, you just have to have something that these two sides can connect with. So whatever you have on hand that you wanna use, 
could totally use that. Yeah, and uh, I see Jan Janet, that does remind me of the ones that you made me. I have them right here with all my, hold on, I'll go grab them. These are very similar, Emily, but this doesn't have oh, foam. Yeah. I've seen those, yes. So yeah. cute. And, and um, leather, right? Is it leather or pleather or? It's um, like a vinyl. Yeah. But this is what I have all of my little goodies in. Yeah. So Janet made this uh, leader of the wolf pack, she wrote. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it has little snaps on the side. Otherwise, it's totally flat. Yeah. And um, I could give you guys the pattern for that too. But yours, it would be the same thing as yours pretty much. Yeah. But it's so fun. Yep. And then here's all my little machine feet. Yours, I love that foam. And there's a, I saw quite a few questions in here. You always have like really cool, um, unique things that you add to yours, Emily. And for those that uh, have never worked with foam before, uh, some people are asking, is that the same foam that's inside of purses? Yes. Yeah, I oh. think so. I think um, that might even be where I, why I originally purchased it is I was making a purse pattern that I had gotten from someone else and it was called for in the construction. And then I was like, I could use this for so many things. So I use fusible foam whenever I make like ca a case for my iPad or laptop covers because it just really does give um, some padding in there as well as, you know, gives it some structure. And it's easy to work with. It really is very pliable and sews. You can sew through it and not really worry about the thickness. Absolutely. And Sandy, I put a link to the machine. It's the LB5000 combination sewing and embroidery. Yep. She has the Marvel, M-A-R-V-E-L mm -hmm. embroidery designs in hers. And I have the same one with the Star Wars designs. Yep. So, and you can call the, uh, call your local brother dealer, even though they're not open, they're still there. And yep. they're doing like drive up and open your trunk. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. All right, Rich Ann, you want to know the pattern? I have her website at the bottom here, lifesosavory.com. Yeah. Search also, up fabric basket in the search bar at the top, and this will come right up. And it's just a one-page printable template that I you cut on the fold of the fabric, and then two of fabric and one of foam, and then you're all set. Very easy. So there's yep. the way. And I also have um, my website, and I also have Brother's blog on there. So all three okay. you can capture in that. Christine, um, can you tell us about your online tutorial and where we can find? What is the Wolf Pack? Well, the Wolf, <laughs> I, the Wolf Pack because I'm Angela Wolf. They named they named it, and I'm stuck with it because it's very fun. So um, we have a, a Facebook group, Angela Wolf Patterns, and you can pop if you go to angelawolf.com, you can find it. But we all call ourselves the Wolf Pack now. Emily's part of the Wolf Pack. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> And uh, so it's just our nickname for, uh, we have a lot of fun and sewing together, uh, I would have to say, and embroidery and everything else. Okay, so Sarah had a question for you. Could you just sew, let me see what that one says. It's too small. Oh, button through both pieces. Oh, no buttonholes. Yes, so you could just sew this um, if you didn't ever want it to fold flat. Yep, then you, you could position these two sides, wherever you wanted, you know, in the middle, on the sides, overlapping, not overlapping, and then just stitch it. And yes, be totally fine. And then it would just be, you know, sort of permanently there. Yep. Absolutely. Hey, Celeste, uh, she says, if we make these baskets, where can we share them? Well, a couple things. You can share them on Instagram. What is your Instagram again, Emily? Uh, Life So Savory. Same. And mine is Angela Wolf Fashion. So you can share them on uh, Instagram. But if you do that, make sure you put hashtag uh, tag Emily, tag me, or tag Brother Sews, hashtag Brother Sews. And then they can uh, share those. You can also see them. And Emily, do you have a private, you have a private Facebook group, don't you? Yep. So if you search Life So Savory Pattern Group on Facebook, um, you will find it and it has like a couple of questions to answer. And then I just hit accept on all those people who ask to join. Um, but we got to filter out the crazies. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it's really active and it's a really fun place to show off what you're working, especially things that you've made inspired by my tutorials and patterns. I love that. Yeah. yeah. And it is very inspiring to see what other people are making. I've just read it yeah. through a few. Yeah, so fun. 
I, I was reading this and uh, Sharon, I hate to say this. All I could see was French fries. I've been dying for some French fries <laughs> at the stores. I have not. I mean, I could go through a drive through but that's like the one thing I'm craving. But that's not what you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can put some fries in here. It does. The end kind of folds up like a fry basket. <laughs> Okay, so in your directions, do you have um, resources for where they can find this foam? You know what? I'm not 100% sure, and I'm not 100% sure that even if I give you a link that it will be available right now since everything seems to be sold out. But I will, as soon as we hang up, so give me 10 minutes, I will go and make sure I add a link or more information. In fact, yeah, I probably shouldn't even show this really, but I have it. I'll have them go to your blog. I'll put it in and I'll at least give you the name of it and then you can, and I'll see if I can find a link. Um, and yeah, so just give me 10 minutes and I'll go add that right in if it's not in there. Hey, uh, Trisha, and we're not making a mask, by the way. This is a, no, <laughs> I guess it kind of looks like one, but no, this, this is not a mask. This is a basket. We're doing masks on Thursday. So this is this is organizing week. We're trying to like organizing, yeah, something fun. <laughs> oh, okay, everybody's crazy about sewing. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we want All the right. sewing crazies in there, just not everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Emily, this was so much fun. Thank this you, everybody. Great. great project, and you guys. Even if you're watching, as soon as we're not live, if you missed the beginning in yeah. about. It's about four minutes. You can go yeah. back and watch the live. Either share it to your uh, your own timeline. It's easy to find that. But yeah. don't forget when you go to the brother Facebook page. When you like, when we're done here, go back to the brother sews Facebook page. And in the top, right under the picture, and the top left, it's like right. I'll try to take a photo of that tomorrow. But if you click on the arrow and say how you want to see brothers post, if you click on see first, it's probably set mm -hmm. to default. And it goes back to default every few months, but click yeah. see first. Every time we go live, you'll get that. And then I see Sharon is on here uh, from YouTube because we are now also live streaming on YouTube. So to make it even hey. easier. <laughs> All right, Emily, say hi to the kids. Yeah, I will. Thank you. See you guys next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye.